Hello and welcome again to Partition Designer. In this video we will be looking at alcoves, specifically what are the type of alcoves that are supported in Partition Designer, and secondly how users can make changes to alcoves and take control over each component in the layout. So the first thing we'll do is look at a brief slideshow that shows the various alcoves that Partition Designer covers. All right, first is the alcove, the standard alcove we call it. And in this case, the strike pilaster connects to the panel. We can see right here that uh, these are butted end to end. Uh, and if there's an additional pilaster, and there's not always, but if there is an additional pilaster, it comes off of either the panel or the pilaster and continues with the rest of the layout. All right, the next one is the alcove XP, the perpendicular pilaster or the cross pilaster. And in that case, we can see why it's called that. Um, it's got the strike pilaster, the cross pilaster, and the, and the panel. So the strike pilaster is separated from the panel. Okay? This is done often for the sake of stability, uh, whether it's a ceiling hung, floor supported, or if it's a plastic material that requires extra support. All right, and then of the, of the, stand, the regular alcoves, the alcove FS, the flat strike, is the last one we're looking at. Uh, in our tutorial, we'll look at a few more very briefly right now, but the flat strike is employed and there's, you'll notice there's no strike pilaster. Now some additional alcoves are what we call side alcoves and in this case the first stall, the handicap stall in either an in corner or between wall is larger, in fact too large to be supported by a, the typical pilaster door pilaster configuration. So an additional panel is, is used if the toilet is to the left, okay, and if the toilet is to the right, there's an additional panel and pilaster. All right, and the side alcove FS or flat strike is again uh, an additional panel when the toilet is left. Okay, and the door is opposite the, t the toilet, and that is uh, rotated 90 degrees relative to the panel. And the same thing with the uh, toilet right or door left. Okay, so. So we'll look at the uh, specific examples of those th first three types we looked at, and we'll hit Open Project. And this is called Alcove Dialog, and you'll notice that the room names reflect the specific names of the uh, of the items that uh, or the type of alcoves we'll be looking at. So first we'll select Alcove Standard. We'll hit View Edit Room Layout, which is the way that we get to the layout editor and make our changes. And one thing we can say right off the bat is that every one of these dimensions that are pertinent to the alcove's y-axis dimensions uh, are tied together and if you click on any one of them it will bring up an alcove dialog box which includes uh, all of these dimensions so uh, if we needed to make changes let's say we went from 109 to 112 and we now notice 12 34 4 if i click outside that it modifies makes this 14 34 and 5 so it took the additional three inches and affected the other components. Now, doors is something that the user has to make changes with. We changed that to a 36. This came down to a 12. And we'll hit Update. Okay, we'll move this over and we can see the difference between what our proposed changes and our existing. We hit Update and the changes are applied. Okay, we'll go to the Alcove XP, the cross pilaster. And here, similar situation. Uh, any of these dimensions that we click on that have underlines are linked. This here is for information only, so clicking on the 48 won't do anything for us. The 60 is a, is a determining factor, that is, it's a stall depth that's been specified, and the other components also. Uh, this is more of a theoretical uh, for reference only dimension. So I'll click on the door, and again, we can see that it opens up the entire dialog box. And here we'll bring this up to uh, 113, and it bounces our this dimension from a, three, from a 3 to a 4, it brought this up from, I believe, uh, an 8 to a 12 because of the 5 inch increase. And uh, if I knock this down, let's say to a 34, uh, other changes made, this is brought up to a 14. And so, again, I'll move this to the right. We can see the difference between the proposed changes and the existing. I hit update and the changes are applied. The last one we'll look at is the flat strike. and here, uh, again, very similar. The only difference is there is no uh, strike pilaster. And so if I click on any of these dimensions, uh, it will automatically open up our alcove dialog box. And the dialog box uh, correctly reflects the absence of the strike pilaster. 
So uh, let's say we were to bring this up to 102 inches. Okay. Notice a change in the 5 to a 3. I'll bring it down to 101. It knocks that down to a 4. If I bring this down to a 34, the only place it can change is this guy right here. So it makes that change. And again, just looking at the existing as opposed to what was, 34, 6, and 101. Here we have 36, 3, and 100. Okay, we'll hit update. Changes are applied. One more thing with the flat strike and the cross pilaster. They have a, they're sort of like cousins. And that is, if I am in the uh, flat strike, and let's say I change this to 110 inches, what happens is the system knows that I'm going to need that other strike pilaster. So it gives me the opportunity. It says, do you want to change to a through alcove? We say, OK. And automatically, the system will do the dimensional calculations that will make this a viable layout. It, it uh, adheres to the, um, as much as possible to the priorities of you, the manufacturer, when it makes those changes. But again, if we wanted to, to uh, you know, make any, any modification to what we have there, we could come in here and, and uh, accomplish that. For instance, uh, let's say I w wanted to knock this down to a 34, okay, and I'll bring this up to a 4, and bring this up to a 1, as well as this, and we'll hit update. And the system tells us we've got a problem. Okay, the components are two inches more than the alcove width, so I'm not sure how that happened, but we'll knock this down to a three, we'll bring this back down to a half an inch, and this one as well. And you can see the system is aware and keeps the user from doing anything that doesn't make sense from a uh, dimensional standpoint. And so that's, uh, that's alcoves in a nutshell. We have a, another uh, video called How to Handle Large Stalls, and that deals with the side alcoves that we looked at earlier. Thank you, and we appreciate your time.